welcome to episode 21 of the uh, all-wheel drive Mustang project, Project Traction. As I kind of warned you in the last episode that I might be off the grid for a little while, um, it's been almost two months since the last video, and that's not for lack of effort. I've been actually just flogging on it, trying to get things done. Um, I kind of committed to myself that I wasn't going to spend time on videos until the thing is on the wheels. And if you notice, look behind me, it's not up on the rack, it's on the ground. And so I'm not going to cover everything in this video, but I've made uh, great progress. Um, you know, my goal, I mentioned in the last video, was to try to get it on the wheels with no axles and to get it to the car show, which was about a month ago. That didn't happen for various reasons. Uh, some of those will be explained later on. Uh, but I did go to the show, brought the Mercur, and, and had a great time. So to get it on the wheels, I basically had to get the oil pan done, uh, get the oil pickup tube done, get the front cross member done, relocate the rack, get the front spindles finalized, get all the front suspension together, and uh, a little spoiler alert for the next couple of episodes, but all that has happened. Uh, still no axles, it is not all wheel drive, but it is drivable, and I am proving out the front suspension. But this video is going to focus on just part of that and probably the hardest part, which is uh, getting the oil pan done. Uh, as you know, that's an integral part of this whole concept because the differential bolts to the oil pan and there's a jack shaft going through it. And I had a pretty good plan, but you know, sometimes uh, the execution can be a little difficult. So I'm going to get into that. Uh, lot, lots to cover. So let's get rolling. The first step in making the oil pan, uh, or modifying the oil pan, was making all the pieces for the pan. And there was quite a few, and since the pan was steel, they all had to be machined out of steel. The uh, first part was the little uh, round receptacle for the spud on the differential and the flange that goes with it. And so that's what I tackled first. My friend Harold uh, helped me make the, the first part out of some 1018 steel to ensure it was easy to weld. Basically boring through and uh, putting all the steps to be a good fit to the spud on the differential. The 1018 steel machines reasonably well. It's just tough to get a good surface finish, but it makes reasonable chips and we made pretty quick work of making the parts. Uh, unfortunately here I didn't get a good shot of the completed part before welding it uh, but then we moved on or I moved on to making the plate I probably should have had this water jetted or laser cut out but I didn't want to wait and I was in the middle of fabrication and when you have a mill why not so I milled it out of some plate I had uh, laying around modeled it in CAD and once again it went pretty fast the only trick here is once I had all the holes in, in the part I needed a way to hold it down to cut the perimeter and so I basically made a quick uh, fixture to hold it down out of a block of aluminum I had laying around you know this isn't that critical just needed some bolt holes to uh, be able to you know, mount it and as you can see here um, I just used a clamp and some bolts and then proceeded to mill the outside perimeter and it all went pretty darn fast and cut really well that's the beauty of uh, using Fusion 360 and using the CAM software. It's almost faster to do it in CAD and, and, and mill it out than to like take this and draw it and use a bandsaw. It's, it's so fast. So anyways, as you can see, the part turned out fantastic and we're getting ready to weld everything together. The spud receiver was a slight press to the plate part or the flat part and which kind of held it together and then I TIG welded both the backside and the face of it and so to try to clean up that face weld we're going to call it I chucked it back in the lathe and proceeded to kind of straighten it out this was a little scary at first with such a non-round non part but it actually went really smooth and there was virtually no chatter and I was pretty excited how well this turned out. It, uh, it, but it turns out, a little foreshadowing here, I probably shouldn't have welded the parts together in this sequence. Um, but I really wanted to do this. I wanted to weld the flange to the receiver, the diff receiver, and then clean it up, just like as you see in the video, 
to make sure everything was perpendicular and, and square. Um, but this ultimately caused me issues when I was welding this to the uh, oil pan because it basically blocked access to the back of it. And so I couldn't get a weld where I needed it to, needed it to be. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. But for your pl viewing pleasure, look how uh, well this uh, came out when I'm all done uh, facing off this completely non-round part. The next part to machine was the bearing holder or the bearing receiver for the driver's side of the car that supports the jack shaft. operations are done and uh, so here here's the cross tube slides in there and here's the bearing for the jack shaft and that's meant to be a, a slip fit it's going to be a press fit into the cover um, so now I got to put it in the mill and put the bolt pattern in but uh, it turned out uh, pretty well The next part to machine was the cap or bearing retainer. So here's the idea, here's the completed part that goes on the oil pan side and the, the tube, the cross tube goes in here and then this is the bearing I'm going to use which is basically a bearing meant for some kind of Kia but it's, uh, it's meant for a jack shaft application and I made it just a slight, you know, a couple thou clearance fit on this side but then on this side it's not a press, but it's really close. One of those things you got to get it just lined up perfect. And the shaft will be pressed into the ID of this. And then it comes together and you got three screws holding it together here. And now it actually bottoms out on the bearing itself. There's actually a slight amount of clearance here and it sandwiches the bearing so when you tighten this up 
the, there's no slop and without having you know snap rings or I didn't want to have snap rings or anything so now the bearing is solid and with the shaft pressed in it it'll hold it um, lengthwise right so um, now I can start mocking this up on the oil pan putting the tube in and hopefully start welding the next operation was to start cutting the oil pan itself using the holes I, I drilled a couple episodes ago where I had these 3d printed guides there was a quarter inch holes in the oil pan I used those as pilots then to just simply take some um, hole saws to cut the holes through the oil pan at a reasonably accurate position to shove the cross shaft tube through and the bearing support So here's a reinforcement bracket that my friend Harold made. Um, once the cross tube and the support is put in right here, we won't be able to get to this bolt. And so the idea is I'm going to bolt this in and pre-weld it to try to re stiffen this up so that even with this bolt missing, we'll still get a good seal and, and good support and spread the load out of the, of the diff mount. But it's a little wide, so I'm going to do a little flapper wheel action on this, and then I'm going to put a, fig, a few TIG tacks here, and then proceed to start welding the tube. I put it all back in the car and did one last sanity check before starting to weld, just to make sure everything was clearing okay. So after welding in the bearing support and everything, I'm adding some outriggers here to tie it into these bolts. So basically I machine these little spacers and then the sheet metal part will be welded to the back of the bearing carrier to the spacer and to the oil pan. Uh, same thing over here. And then I'll have to use a short screw underneath to get to that, get to that screw. But this will tie everything together up and down, left and right, to support the loads of the CV joint in addition to the tube going all the way across. So, anyways, it's all ready to go. I got everything machined. I just got to take it apart, buzz off the paint, and uh, burn it in. So, that's the next step.
final leak test. Um, as I've mentioned, the oil pan and basically the, how I chose to weld it or the sequence of how I chose to weld it really kicked, um, kicked my butt to be honest. And basically getting this thing not to leak was a major challenge slash couple of week at least, if not three week delay to the project. Um, and basically is what caused me not to get it to the show. Um, is this I thought was going to be pretty easy and really kicked my butt. Um, but basically the solution was I was to try to weld all this the best I could, which was not great because I already had put this plate on it. And after I got it from being a basically the Exxon Valdez, Valdez to just a little bit of a drip, um, and trying and trying and trying to get rid of that drip, I finally gave up and did something I've done on other oil pans and basically pour 15 both the outside where it was leaking and then the inside on both sides. This side never really leaked, but I just did it anyways. But this side was the, was the challenge. So basically I properly prepped the surface, put on their cleaner, put on their metal prep, and then pour 15 the inside and outside. The pour 15 is um, impervious to oil um, on a couple different pans. You know, on my four banger all wheel drive Mercur, I did the same thing. And on the V8 Mercur, which hasn't leaked in 15 years, I did the same thing. I pour 15 the whole inside of the pan. Um, I was trying not to do that for a couple of weeks and finally broke down. And, uh, and did it and it worked because now it has been soaking full of water for hours and as you can see there's nothing whereas before there would have been water a drip you know not not gushes but a, a drip so success it's now going to get cleaned out uh, for the final time prep for a final coat of outside paint and put in uh, put in for good also got the last coat of paint on the oil pan here and uh, I'm going to bolt it in for good tonight actually and uh, should be ready to go. So after getting the oil pan done, uh, the next uh, challenge we'll say uh, was an oil pickup tube. You know the oil pickup tube normally bolts to the engine and with the jack shaft or that tube going through the oil pan it would basically interfere and the trick is how to get an oil pickup tube that either bolts to the oil pan or bolts to the engine that clears that tube and I had a couple different theories on that I'll get into and in, in how I ultimately solved that problem my original plan was actually to swap out the oil pump to one of these, which this is a stock Gen 3 oil pump, you know, so a 2018 and newer Mustang oil pump. And they come with a plastic oil pan that has the pickup tube built into the oil pan. And so the older cars um, and the GT500s and a few others come with this oil pump, which has a bolt-on oil pickup tube right well, this is my fabricated one but it bolts on and so my thought was to swap it out with this and then actually run the um, pickup tube in a sense below the cross shaft right and because uh, you got to be able to assemble the oil pump right so if you were to say make an oil pickup tube that bolted on right here and in a sense ran above the jack shaft once you bolted the oil pickup to the engine, you couldn't put the oil pan on, right? It's a chicken and egg problem. So you either have to go underneath the, or I guess it's just the whole engine's upside down. You either have to go above the jack shaft and have a bolt to the engine, then you can remove the oil pan, or you have to basically mount the pickup tube permanently to the oil pan and then have it so as you install the oil pan, it somehow hooks up to the oil pump. And that's exactly how the 2018 and newers work. They basically, the pickup tube is part of the oil pan. Um, but once I actually made the oil pan and kind of mocked up the jack shaft, like you see here with these 3D printed parts, uh, I realized that there really is a, enough space underneath it, well, underneath in this one, it's upside down, above it, 
um, to run it to rub it above, run it above. So, and rather than spending a whole weekend or maybe more taking the whole front of the engine apart just to put this oil pump in, uh, I decided to leave the stock pump in it and run the F-150 gasket and just make my own oil pickup tube which goes above the jack shaft. I, th I think that's the right call until the engine comes out for other reasons and then maybe I'll change my mind like if I ever beef it up or whatever. But for right now it didn't make sense to me to spend a whole, with my limited time, free time, spend a whole weekend taking the whole engine apart just to put this oil pump in when I can do this. So that is the plan. Side note, to make this new plan work, um, to have the, the, the pickup tube be close to the block and also to clear the jack shaft, which would be coming right through here, uh, I pretty quickly decided uh, that I couldn't use the, the normal Mustang Coyote oil pan gasket. As you can see, if you don't realize, the Mustang oil pan gasket is actually a gasket and a windage tray all in one. But as you can see, I've already cut this one up a little bit to get it to try to clear the cross tube. But it also impedes any kind of tight fitting oil pickup tube. And so instead, I'm using a F-150 gasket. So this is a Coyote F-150 gasket. And well, it's, there we go. Coyote F-150 gasket. And it's just a simple gasket. You know, there's no built-in windage tray. Now, obviously, having a windage tray is a good thing, um, but I, you got to pick your battles. And I've decided that uh, this is long-term. I can try to address the windage tray, maybe with something that bolts to the main caps or as part of the oil pan. But for now, I'm just keeping it simple and using this gasket. So here was my first attempt. Um, I cut the flange off a stock oil pickup tube, and I bought some. Uh, mandrel bends, some one inch OD mandrel bends and kind of sucked it in tight to the block and as you can see it clears the tube and then ties itself into the production end here and I tried to, so I bought some tubing that's a little bit big to not have butt joints, so they'd all be basically sleeved and then the weld would be outside the tube and um, there'd be less chance of getting junk inside the tube. So my big concern is if any little piece of weld breaks loose and gets sucked into the oil pump, it'll lock it up and, of course, then trash the engine. And so I tried to do that on this one, but here I got a little too close to the corner and for sure here. And to be honest, I am not the greatest TIG welder. At least I'm out of practice for sure. And... Um, trying to get back into this I think I got my welds too hot for sure up in here I blew a hole in it and I did fill it back in but now I'm having nightmares that I could finish this and put it in the car but is it a ticking time bomb unfortunately and so I think it's worth starting over again and using this one as just practice um, which is just a time suck, but that's the way it goes. I think I have to do that and just call this one practice and make a better one. So I think the mistake I made on my first prototype is my thinking was sound where I, I don't want butt joints, right? If I just were to cut this and then butt a tube up against it and then weld around it, if my weld isn't perfect, if there's any debris or loose particles on the inside, they can come loose over time and get into the oil pump. And so you see a lot of aftermarket um, pickups where they basically sleeve it, right? They'll have a cut and then to join it together they put a bigger tube around it and then weld quite a far, quite a distance away from the actual joint. And that's what I wanted to do and that's what I intended to do. But in my first prototype I showed, I, to get the angles right, I cut it mid-angle here and then the, my overlap tube kind of, I broke the, my own rule. And so, but this angle is wrong because I inherently want to uh, raise it. I keep on thinking upside down. Of course, in the car, it's like this. 
even though I'm working on my mock-up block when it's up like this. But So basically, when it's like this, to get it to go ab above the jack shaft, I, this angle has to be higher. So now, rather than cutting it right here, mid-cut or mid-bend, I'm going to cut it here so there's enough, enough space for a, a sleeve um, and then try to heat it up with an acetylene torch to get the angle to bend it. Um, so, if that doesn't work, we'll have to get another one and start over again. But that is the, that is the plan now, plan number two. Well, after more work than I want to admit, I think it's version two here is finally ready to be welded or brazed. I'm still waffling on that, but basically this is a new custom piece. This is a bend. Um, started with a new upper piece and now I have at least a half an inch of overlap at every joint. Um, I had to heat this up and bend it up to basically have it kind of loop-de-loop -loop underneath the uh, um, jack shaft tube while still having a reasonable bend here. And um, it's a little tight to the bolts but there's actually plenty of clearance to the crank and now it's time to tack it together. Um, I've got it all cleaned out, you know, and uh, I wire wheeled everything for a good clean surface for welding here. Kind of like how I tested the oil pan with water. Uh, after uh, welding the oil pickup, I wanted a way to pressurize it to make sure there was no leaks. And so we machined this adapter that mimics the end of the oil pump and then is plumbed with a pressure gauge and a Schrader valve to be pressurized. And then the whole thing the whole pickup tube could then be put under water uh, while it's pressurized. We put a rubber cap over the, the end of the pickup and basically let it sit in water to make sure there was no bubbles and that it held pressure the whole time. And of course it did after a few tweaks, we'll say. Well, that's a wrap for episode 21. Wow, that was a lot to cover. Hope you found that interesting. Um, I'll start editing the next video here shortly uh, covering the front suspension. Um, I am excited to say the least that the car is on the wheels and I'm driving it around and uh, so far so, so good. Now I need to start working on axles but I need to get caught up on the videos. So if you find these videos interesting I'm hoping you can like and subscribe. My little experiment last time where I asked everybody to do a thumbs up I think totally worked. My uh, viewership uh, went up and uh, the amount of uh, people that YouTube exposed the video to went up if you look at the analytics. So please give a thumbs up, like and subscribe, comment below any questions on the pan or any other parts I'm making. Um, please uh, ask questions. I love it. A guy recently asked some good questions about transfer cases. So I love interacting with people. So please ask questions and leave some comments. But until next time, thanks for watching.